Hello everyone. Welcome to the final part of the chapter hemodynamics. Today we are going to discuss a very important concept that is etiopathogenesis of shock. Remember shock is a very frequently asked essay question in your prof exam. We will be discussing mainly the etiopathogenesis and morphological features of septic shock. So whenever in question they have mentioned you please always try to write the diagnosis correct mostly it will be septic shock please don't write it's a cardiogenic shock hypovolemic shock okay unless the features uh, related to uh, such uh, shock are given in your question it will be a very short clinical case scenario so please uh, most of the time you can write it as septic shock fine yes so what is shock it is nothing else but a state of circulatory failure. This circulatory failure may be because of various reasons that we will be discussing and based on that reason we call it as a cardiogenic, hypokolemic or septic shock. As a result of this circulatory failure, there will be impaired tissue perfusion and cellular hypoxia. Fine? Yes. This shock may be because of any severe hemorrhage, extensive trauma or burns, myocardial infarction, microbial sepsis, pulmonary embolism. Generally, as per Robin's 10th edition, we have only three categories of shock. Number one is cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic, that means the problem arises from the heart. It is because of myocardial pump failure. It may be either because of myocardial infarction, or cardiac tamponade or ventricular arrhythmias or outflow obstruction pulmonary embolism we are not going to touch cardiogenic shock now because cardiogenic shock okay all these features we will discuss in cvs pathology in detail then hypovolemic hypovolemic means low volume shock because of low cardiac output okay this low cardiac output may be due to low blood volume this low blood volume may be because of any massive hemorrhage or the fluid loss as a result of severe burns. Next, remember, the most important shock that we are going to discuss today is the septic shock. Is the septic shock. What is sepsis? You should know the definition of sepsis. It is a must known definition. VIP definition. What is sepsis? Remember, sepsis is defined as a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by dysregulated host response to infection. So, three definitions are there, children. As per the third international consensus definition for sepsis and septic shock, sepsis, septic shock, and systemic inflammatory response syndrome. These three are three different entities. Okay, once this question has been asked in DNB exam, DNB exam, sepsis means it's a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by dysregulated host response to what infection then septic shock is nothing else but it is also a subset of sepsis but there will be profound circulatory cellular and metabolic abnormalities am i right yes and remember septic shock has higher mortality than sepsis what is sirs sirs means systemic inflammatory response syndrome systemic inflammatory reps, response syndrome it is nothing else but a sepsis like condition see uh, please note the word it is a sepsis like condition it is associated with a systemic inflammation okay all systems will be involved it is triggered by a variety of features variety of features like burns trauma or pancreatitis any chronic inflammation that may also induce the systemic inflammatory response syndrome as you all know the systemic inflammatory response syndrome is one of the pathogenesis which has been proposed for the death caused due to covid 19 infection death caused due to covid 19 infection so this is called a systemic inflammatory response syndrome fine so these are the three definitions given by as per the third consensus of okay international consensus definition for sepsis and septic shock sepsis septic shock sirs fine let us go through this table. I have already told you what I have told you. They have what? Given it. The type of shock. Cardiogenic. Cardiac origin. Failure of myocardial pump. Which may be because of any intrinsic problem or extrinsic compression or outflow obstruction. 
hypovolemic due to either low cardiac output or fluid loss as in case of extensive hemorrhage, severe trauma as well as in case of severe burns there will be plasma loss. Then shock associated with inflammation. In shock associated with inflammation, remember because of some super antigens, as you have learned in bacteriology, super antigens are produced by you know staph aureus, all this you know staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome. Some bacteria, fungus, virus, all produce toxic shock syndrome. Okay, all this causes some mechanism. Okay, that is cytokine activation, peripheral vasodilation, pooling of blood, endothelial injury, leukocyte induced damage and finally disseminated intravascular coagulation. Don't worry, we will be discussing in detail about the etiopathogenesis of shock through all these different mechanisms very soon. Fine. And we have some other shock which is very less common. We call it as Neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock means because of any spinal cord injury. Anaphylactic shock already we have discussed. It is a type of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Now, now let me say, now let me say septic shock. Septic shock. Remember, septic shock is mainly because of microbial infection. Microbial infection are the most common cause of what? Yes, triggering factor for septic shock. Here comes the question. Out of gram positive and gram negative bacteria, which is more common? You think that gram negative, yes. So that is producing endotoxin. So that is going to cause septic shock. The answer is wrong. It is the gram positive bacteria which most frequently trigger the septic shock, followed by gram negative bacteria and fungus. This is a very, very important MCQ question you will get. Out of gram positive and gram negative bacteria, which is going to trigger the infection? The order is like this gram positive followed by gram negative followed by fungus and finally we have virus okay finally we have virus fine yes so as a result of this macrophages neutrophils dendritic cells all those complement pathway everything will be activated this is responsible for what some inflammatory and counter inflammatory response see remember the most important mechanism for organ damage is is what inflammatory and counter inflammatory response what does this mean for example this is a microbe this is a microbe fine this is the cell surface this microbe has entered the cell surface you know the normal pathway this will be recognized by the what the micro uh, the what we call this you know pamp that is pathogen associated molecular patterns all this so the microbial recognition will be taking place antigen presenting cell will recognize the microbial antigen it will present it to that uh, what are the uh, t helper t helper or cytotoxic t lymphocyte finally is causing tissue damage so this is the normal inflammation pathway so normal inflammation pathway will get activated normal inflammation pathway will get activated and remember as a result of this inflammation our body will produce some counter inflammatory what substances so the interaction of this inflammatory and counter inflammatory response is responsible for the tissue damage this is almost the same problem which happens in covid-19 infection also so let us see what are the factors which are believed to play a major role in the pathophysiology of the septic shock okay yes so this is the this is the pathway this pathway only you have to keep in mind if you remember this it's that's all okay because in shock they will ask you first what is the diagnosis part one of the question part two what is etiopathogenesis if you draw this figure that is more than enough the third thing what are the different organ damages okay what are the different organ damages you will get in what shock okay these are the things morphology Fine. see microbial products pam pathogen associated molecular pattern let us see see we have various pathways let us see one pathway one by one number one this microbial pamp or the product will activate factor 12 this factor 12 you know will further activate procoagulants okay which will increase the tissue factor decrease the tissue factor pathway inhibitor thrombomodulin and protein c you know all these are what anti thrombotic they will decrease thrombus formation so decrease thrombus formation all those substances will be decreased that means there will be what the curve will shift towards what the procoagulant side as a result there will be microvascular thrombosis causing disseminated intravascular coagulation causing tissue ischemia and finally lead to multi-organ failure remember this mechanism is most commonly responsible for adrenal gland insufficiency adrenal insufficiency so this is the first pathway second pathway the microbial products will cause complement activation c3 will activate it to form c3a 
okay either it may directly or indirectly it will causes endothelial activation remember as a result of this endothelial activation it will be favoring more towards procoagulant side as well as anti fibrinolytic that is pi 1 all this will be increased anti fibrinolytic so again it will be more pro thrombotic so finally what will happen microvascular thrombosis and finally this will leads to again tissue what ischemia and as a result of after this tissue ischemia finally what will happen it will also leads to multi organ failure it will also causes what multi organ failure next this endothelial activation will increase what what will induce the formation of cytokines what are the important cytokines interleukin 6 8 and paf what do you mean by paf platelet activating factor platelet activating factor all these causes vasodilation decreased perfusion increased permeability again this is going to cause multi-organ failure then this endothelial activation may okay yes that is the what we say the third pathway so complement activation endothelial activation multi-organ failure or this microbial product will directly activate the endothelial activation fine the final pathway is neutrophil and monocyte activation as a result of this okay tnf tumor necrosis factor okay then uh, interleukin 1 and next very very important high mobility group box 1 protein yes this protein high i'm writing here high mobility group high mobility group box 1 protein High mobility group box 1 protein has been implicated in the etiopathogenesis of which of the following disease? This question has been asked in AIMS. This question has been asked in AIMS. HMB at that time nobody know what is HMG B1. Okay, it has been well mentioned in the Robin's 10th edition. HMG B1 that is high mobility group box 1 protein. This will cause cytokines and cytokine like mediators activation. Finally, it will also uh, what induce the formation of interleukin 10, which will further causes further causes immunosuppression so that is one way one pathway the other pathway it will you know interleukin one is responsible for the systemic effects in inflammation that is fever myocardial contractility will be diminished metabolic abnormalities finally this also causes multi multi organ failure so you are seeing that in one side there is increased inflammation in another side there is immunosuppression so here comes the question which of the following is responsible for immunosuppression answer is answer is what immunosuppression is mainly because of interleukin 10 that is a and b is nothing else but soluble yes tnfr means soluble tumor necrosis factor receptor factor receptor interleukin 10 and soluble tumor necrosis factor receptor are responsible for immunosuppression they are anti-inflammatory mediators now i hope you understand what i mean by what i mean by inflammatory and counter inflammatory responses so this is what they have written here okay this is what they have written here okay i am here going to highlight a very one very very important point what is procalcitonin Procalcitonin is also called as the marker of sepsis. Procalcitonin, procalcitonin, it has been recently, recently found out to be the marker for sepsis. Found to be the marker for sepsis. Marker for sepsis, what is that called as? Procalcitonin. Okay, procalcitonin. And this table is VVIP table. VVIP table. With this table, you have to write the complete essay on the etiopathogenesis of the septic shock. Etiopathogenesis of the septic shock. So, as a result of what? Inflammatory and counter-inflammatory responses. Inflammatory and what? Counter-inflammatory responses. All these we have already discussed. Counter-inflammatory responses. The septic shock will occur. This is the first major, this is the first major, what? Mechanism by which the septic shock occurs. What is the second mechanism? Endothelial activation and injury. Already we have discussed this mechanism. Endothelial activation and injury. There will be vascular leakage, tissue edema. Fine. Finally, there will be activation of what? Yes, nitric oxide, PAF, platelet activating factor, chemotactic heat, complex anaphylatoxins, C3A, C5A, they are called as anaphylatoxins. Okay, I am writing here. C3A and C5A, they are called as anaphyla, anaphyla toxins.
then finally finally these are going to cause nitric oxide will cause muscle relaxation systemic hypotension microvascular dysfunction increased capillary permeability fine finally there will be multi organ failure mof multi organ failure second mechanism third mechanism is what we call as induction of procoagulant state already we have discussed how the procoagulant state is induced yes can you tell how it is inhibited fine they will decrease the production of anticoagulant factors like tissue factor pathway inhibitor thrombomodulin protein c content will be decreased procoagulant factor will be increased antifibrinolytic will be decreased fine yes fine yes so all those will finally causes microvascular yes as in this picture you can see they can causes microvascular thrombosis that is what we call as disseminated intravascular coagulation disseminated intravascular coagulation here comes a recent update as per the robin's 10th edition net neutrophil extracellular trap okay very very important neutrophil extracellular trap has been implicated in the etiopathogenesis of septic shock the other believes that scientist believes that neutrophil extracellular trap is responsible for this question is a future okay coming on aims or bgi whatever central institute exam this may be asked as a question because so far they have not asked the neutrophil extracellular trap has been implicated in the etiopathogenesis of shock via which mechanism by promoting the procoagulant system i am going to write it here net neutrophil extracellular trap will stimulate procoagulant stimulate procoagulants and they will also stimulate intrinsic plus extrinsic pathway of coagulation intrinsic or extrinsic pathway of coagulation this will be a potential inicet central institute exam question potential central institute exam question fine once this is done let us see the next mechanism metabolic abnormalities metabolic abnormalities this thing i have not explained so i am going to detail so in metabolic abnormality you know the septic patients will exhibit insulin resistance hyperglycemia what are the hormones responsible for this okay i am going to draw here tnf interleukin 1 glucagon growth hormone and glucocorticoids and catecholamines all the levels all the hormones levels will be increased during septic shock they will cause insulin resistant hyperglycemia fine yes and remember remember why there is insulin resistance why there is insulin resistance so these hormones will stimulate the release of insulin and at the same time pro inflammatory cytokine will suppress insulin release all the pancreas will be releasing from insulin and from the other side the inflammatory cytokines will prevent oppose so the resulted insulin cannot act it can't have any action on the tissue that way it give rise to insulin resistance insulin resistance fine okay then it will impair the surface expressing glut4 glut4 you know glut4 is the glucose transporter which is responsible for glucose uptake into the cell so it is made responsible for maintaining the blood glucose level here because of insulin resistance what the glut4 can't respond to the insulin already insulin is there okay this is the question which has been asked in jigma okay in septic shock whether there is decreased insulin answer is no there is increased insulin but there is insulin resistance because of the suppression or because of the inability of the insulin to act because of the release of the pro inflammatory cytokines fine yes finally there is something what we call it as waterhouse fredrickson syndrome waterhouse fredrickson syndrome it is one of a what a clinical manifestation of the septic shock in which there will be adrenal necrosis as a result of dic okay waterhouse fredrickson syndrome you will see in neisseria infection neisseria infection also you will have the waterhouse fredrickson syndrome i'm writing here neisseria infection okay yes once that is called waterhouse fredrickson syndrome very important once it has been asked in mcq then all this will finally cause what organ dysfunction how organ dysfunction occurs systemic hypotension interstitial edema microvascular dysfunction small vessel thrombosis all this causes cellular hypoxia mitochondrial damage resulting from oxidative stress high levels of cytokines diminish the myocardial contractility cardiac output increased vascular permeability leading to acute respiratory distress syndrome almost all the what vital organs liver heart kidney all this will undergo damage that is why we call it as multi organ dysfunction fine yes once this is done once this is done i told you that 
what we call the super antigens you read what is super antigens super antigens are nothing else but they are the t lymphocyte activators they are polyclonal t lymphocyte activators which will induce the release of high levels of cytokines okay and the cytokines will be continuously released and as a result of that there will be vasodilation hypotension shock and finally death that is called as toxic shock syndrome most commonly it is exhibited by the bacteria called as what staphylococcal aureus that is why we call it staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome okay there are some other bacteria there are some other bacteria some fungus and some viruses okay these uh, the names of those has been well beautifully mentioned in apurva shastri you can go and refer now let us see stages of shock remember stop stop the shock is a progressive disorder it won't lead to death what suddenly fine we have a different stages of shock number one is an initial non progressive state that means and then progressive stage and finally irreversible stage what do you mean by initial non progressive that means our body have some reflex compensatory mechanism this will keeps this will get activated and the vital organs perfusion will be maintained then progressive stage progressive stage means there will be tissue hypoperfusion fine and there will be onset of worsening circulatory and metabolic derangement including acidosis irreversible stage means so severe no survival is possible no survival is possible whatever intervention be made fine yes okay let us see in the non progressive initial stage what are the various mechanisms what are the various reflex mechanism or what are the compensatory mechanism number 1 is baro receptor reflex release of catecholamine and anti diuretic hormone activation of ras and generalized sympathetic stimulation all this mechanism will cause tachycardia peripheral vasoconstriction because already there is vasodilation and what uh, hypotension so that will be corrected there will be cutaneous vasoconstriction and that is responsible for the characteristic shocky skin okay um, shocky skin and pallor remember the septic shock i told you that it initially causes warm and flushed skin that will be converted because of the cutaneous vasoconstriction it will become what we called as the shocky skin and remember remember um out of all these things we have something what we call it as uh, so all these changes will happens in all circulation we have the intestinal circulation that is platelet circulation cutaneous circulation in all the circulation these changes will be there except except this is a very important question that is asked from normal physiology as well as in uh, shock pathology they may ask you in which of the following circulation there won't be there will be what normal flow so already the patient is in shock tissue hypoperfusion has set in okay the patient has vasodilatation and uh, uh, hypotension fine so now the compensatory mechanism came into action that is what sympathetic stimulation as a result of sympathetic stimulation the body is trying to correct all the abnormalities whereas in two circulation that is number 1 is what we call as the cerebral circulation and number 2 is called as coronary circulation there will be no change no change why there is no change because because they have they have what we call it as auto regulation they have what we call it as auto regulation you can read about auto regulation in physiology in detail so just completion sake i am telling okay there won't be any no change fine once that is done once that is done the second stage what is the second stage a progressive stage in progressive stage there will be because of persistent oxygen defect fine the aerobic respiration will be replaced by anaerobic glycolysis you know anaerobic glycolysis will always produce more lactic acid more acid means less ph means ma what is ma metabolic acidosis setting metabolic acidosis setting fine and finally with uh, what in absence of all appropriate intervention that is when the patient has gone for irreversible stage complete cell injury will occurs and the patient will die fine yes now let us see what about the uh, clinical features the clinical features it depends upon the precipitating insult i told you know in cardiogenic shock and hypovolemic shock the patient will exhibit hypotension rapid peak rapid pulse tachypnea cold clammy and cyanotic skin okay and uh, there will be myocardial infarction pulmonary changes all those things there will be oliguria acidosis electrolyte abnormalities so uh, shock is again a topic in a very big topic in surgery as well as in medicine that time you can read uh, in detail about further management but as far as path is concerned you have to know about what is the morphology of various tissues what is the morphology of various tissues in shock okay yes for that one second yes now we are going to see what are the morphology of various tissues in shock <clears throat> 
Yes. In adrenal gland, number one, in adrenal gland, there will be lipid depletion. There will be lipid depletion. Okay, there will be lipid depletion and lipid depletion in the cortical cells. Adrenal cortex, I am writing here, adrenal cortex lipid depletion. Fine? Yes. In kidney, there will be acute tubular necrosis or acute renal failure. Acute tubular necrosis or acute renal failure. Then in lungs, there will be, lungs will be usually relatively resistant to hypoxic injury. However, in septic shock, there is something what we call as DAD. What is DAD? Diffuse alveolar damage with the hyaline membrane formation. Diffuse alveolar damage with hyaline membrane formation. In heart, there will be coagulation necrosis and contraction band necrosis. Contraction band necrosis. We will see what is contraction band necrosis in serious pathology. Liver congestion and necrosis of the centrilobular. Centrilobular liver necrosis. In brain, it may cause cortical necrosis, that is the cerebral cortex necrosis and encephalopathy. And in GIT, it causes diffuse gastrointestinal damage and you can see some punctate hemorrhages. Okay, punctate spot-like hemorrhages in the intestine. Fine, these are the summary of the main morphological features of shock. Now, I am going to discuss the morphological changes in each injury, uh, each organ in a bit detail. First, first. Okay, mainly due to hypoxic injury. Okay, they have written changes in cardiogenic or hypovolemic shock. Fine? Yes. So, there will be lipid depletion in the cortical cells and there will be focal hemorrhage and finally massive hemorrhagic necrosis. I told you, you know, what is that? Severe meningococcal uh, septicemia, Neisseria meningitis. Okay, Neisseria meningitis infection. There will be entire or severe massive hemorrhagic necrosis of the entire adrenal gland associated with the disseminated intravascular coagulation that is called as Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. Fine. Next. Next. In kidney, there will be acute tubular necrosis or acute renal failure. So, the grossly, the kidney will be enlarged, swollen, congested and the cortex will be appearing pale. And on microscopy, you can see that there will be dilation of the proximal tubule and there will be tubular epithelial cell necrosis. And even because of the leakage of the hemoglobin and myoglobin, there will be pigmented cast. And in interstitium, kidney interstitium, there will be edema and mononuclear cell infiltrate. Then let us, uh, this is a very important question. What is shock lung? This may be asked separately as a short non question. Uh, lungs are re relatively resistant to hypoxic injury. In normal, what hypovolemic shock and all, the lungs won't be affected. Whereas in bacterial sepsis, there will be diffuse alveolar damage. You know what we call as ARDS, hyaline membrane disease? Yes. That is acute respiratory distress syndrome. Yes. How the lung will be? Lung will be firm and congested and you know, on cut section, there will be uh, oozing out the lung will be what having some frothy fluid and in microscopy edema will be there fine this is the which, uh, first develops around the peribronchial interstitial connective tissue and later in the alveoli okay that means it will be first uh, developing along the what interstitium then finally pulmonary interstitium and finally only it will reaches the alveoli and finally necrosis because of the intravascular microthrombi fine yes so because of this injury endothelial alveolar epithelial cell injury all this will undergo necrosis finally there will be intravascular microthrombi and finally finally what hyaline membrane formation will be there on the which will, this hyaline membrane will be seen deposited along the alveolar duct and the terminal bronchioles so this is this is okay this is uh, in just about i have told you about what are the uh, changes okay so far uh, this is the see again a table hypovolemic shock cardiogenic shock septic shock and other shock then uh, the summary of the main morphological features of the lung this is very important okay and next is what we call it as the um, what adrenal morphology then renal morphology and finally lungs gross and microscopy you should know these features in detail because this is a very important part of your essay question one is the idiopathogenesis and finally that is your, yes, the same thing, you know, same thing they have mentioned here, cortical cell depletion, shock, lung, okay. In GA tract, what will be there, punctate hemorrhages, okay, over the industry and all those things, okay. So, this finishes, this finishes the shock, very, very important, I am telling again and again, shock is a very important topic, shock is a very important topic, okay. Shock, shock is a very important topic, this will be frequently asked 
in your uh, prof exam okay you should know and i told you how to write most commonly your diagnosis should be a septic shock fine and uh, please uh, go through that uh, what this single picture can explain you about the uh, complete etiopathogenesis of uh, shock and the next please go through the morphology morphology other than the ones which is mentioned here uh, in the form of a table i have mentioned i have taken that from ramdas naik you can refer ramdas naik for that a beautiful table is there okay which will give a summary of all the morphological changes in the various organs and the histopathological changes fine so thank you hope you have enjoyed the session